Studios in Chicago, Illinois. I'm here with Aaron Pieper Gertis. He's another one of the producers on the game. He's sitting in the back there. And uh, we're here to talk. Yeah, give him a round of applause. And we came down here to kind of talk to you guys about uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh, it's a really big, uh, really big thing for us right now. This is our first game under Warner Brothers, so we wanted to make sure that we're coming out with a bang. So I'm going to do a really quick demo for you guys and kind of walk you through the features of the game. And then uh, we'll do a question and answer session at the end of it. So uh, you can switch to the Xbox. No. What is? So Mortal Kombat's been around since uh, 1992. We actually got our start in the arcades with Mortal Kombat 1, and it was a really big deal. Uh, a lot of people really dug it. It became kind of a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, we had movies, we've had toys. I'm sure you guys have all heard of Mortal Kombat before, right? I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to introduce the game too much to you. Um, basically, with this version of Mortal Kombat, we wanted to bring it back to the era of the kind of first three games. And one of the ways that we were able to do that was bringing back a lot of the classic characters from Mortal Kombat's one, two, and three, and also uh, making the gameplay back to a more 2D fighting plane as opposed to the 3D fighting plane that some of the last. Mortal Kombat games have uh, have had. This has been a really welcome kind of um, return back uh, to our gameplay and people are really digging it. Let's do the volume for the Xbox. Raise up the volume on the Xbox. Is low. Alright, so as you can see, let's, uh, if we can get the volume up, as you can see, we've gone back to the kind of 2D plane that's really reminiscent of the first uh, of the first three Mortal Kombat. You can see we have classic characters, Reptile and Katana here, and a lot of the characters are keeping their uh, their original kind of moves. They're just kind of brought in a 2011 version. We're able to do a lot cooler things with uh, technology that some of the older guys weren't able to do back in 1992 and 1993. So as you see them fighting, you're going to see a lot of the kind of the familiar moves that uh, these characters have had in the past. Obviously, Reptile has his force ball, Katana has her fan throw. These are all things that people should be familiar with right away. We wanted to make the game accessible so that if you haven't played Mortal Kombat over the last 10 years or so, you'll still be able to know how to pull off a lot of the moves that are happening in the game. Another thing that you'll notice too is uh, the detail of the characters. It's obviously one of the best Mortal Kombat looking Mortal Kombat games that we've had uh, in quite a number of years. We have a lot of really talented artists and a lot of talented programmers on the team that are really passionate about this game and wanted to make sure that it looked as good as possible. One of the other things that we've added this time around is uh, tag team mode, and this is something that Mortal Kombat hasn't had before. Uh, as you can see, the characters are kind of tagging in and out. We wanted to make sure that each character had their own uh, kind of individual uh, coming into and out to animation. Another way that you can tag into each one of the matches is with a uh, tag uh, assist and a tag swap kind of attack. You can actually call in your tag team partner and perform a special move while you're, uh, while you're controlling your primary character. And it adds up a layer of kind of customization that we haven't really had before. So you can see you can kind of bring your partner in and out and kind of do those kind of things. This is something that uh, Mortal Kombat never had before and we're really excited about bringing it back with this one. Too. Another thing that we've added this time around is the addition of a super meter. You're going to see that Reptile did a, a simple uh, acid spit, but he did an enhanced version. I was throwing one arrow out, and if he does an enhanced version, he throws three of them out. This uh, actually doubles the amount of moves for each one of the characters, so that you can actually do a, a lot more than you've been able to do before. The second level of the super meter allows you to do a combo breaker, and combo breakers are something that Mortal Kombat has had for, uh, for a really long time. When you're playing against somebody that can do those kind of really long combos, you want to be able to kind of break it up so that you're not getting beat up all the time. The super meter at the bottom is also a way for us to make the game have a little bit more depth. When you filled up the super meter the entire way, you're able to perform what we're calling the x-ray move. So that's a pretty, pretty intense, uh, pretty intense move. It's one of the most damaging moves that we've had in Mortal Kombat today. It's almost kind of a mini fatality in the middle of the match. If you're able to perform one of those in the middle of the match, it's pretty much over. It's a pretty big deal. Every character is going to have their own one that kind of speaks to their kind of uh, gameplay style. So 
as you can see, you can actually combo into these X-rays, and the really more advanced players are going to have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, damage potential when they kind of bust those out. Another thing that you guys will notice is the blood that's in this game. Uh, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe was kind of a departure of some of the older games that we had. Uh, it had a little bit less blood, it didn't have as much gore and stuff, but this time around we really wanted to amp up the kind of uh, blood and gore and dismemberment that uh, that we haven't had before. A lot of this guy in the front is classic. A lot of people have really been asking for that for Mortal Kombat. It's not really a Mortal Kombat game if you don't have this, uh, a lot of blood. So we really wanted to make up for the last game with this one and make this one the most violent and the most intense game that we've, uh, that we've made today. Another thing that you'll notice is the speed of the game. This is obviously one of the fastest Mortal Kombat games that we've made to date. The gameplay is really reminiscent of uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. It's really fast paced. There's a lot of back and forth action. It's a really frantic pace just going on, so you never really feel like you're out of the map. There's always potential for you to come back, and with the inclusion of the X-ray moves, you can actually uh, do a lot of really cool things. You guys liking what you see so far? You think that we're getting it right? Awesome. Uh, we're really proud of we're really proud of this game. There's a lot of people on the team that have worked really, really hard. Um, a lot of us on the team are fans of Mortal Kombat. I've been a fan of Mortal Kombat since uh, 1992. So being a part of this version of the game is, is meant a lot because it's taking the best elements of, of all of the games and kind of putting them into a nice package to present to the fans. And we think that people are going to be really excited about it when they get it. I'll just let you guys kind of take in the uh, the gameplay so you guys can kind of enjoy what's happening. You guys want to see a fatality, I'm sure, right? So, that's Mortal Kombat 2011. We're shooting for a spring release. You guys can actually uh, pre-order right today at uh, the Game Planet booth if you guys want to go on and over there. We're going to talk a, lot, a little bit more about some of the other stuff. If we can go to a laptop right now, that'll be cool. So I'm going to show you guys a couple videos that, uh, that we have to kind of demonstrate some of the tech that we have uh, in the game right now. This, this next video is going to be a demonstration. This is one of the advanced techniques that Mortal Kombat has never had before. We're calling this kind of the Gobo lighting system. And basically you can see Scorpion doing his kata sequence and he's moving in and out of the lights. This is something that in 1992 Ed Boon and John Tobias could have never imagined that this technology exists. So you'll see in a lot of the backgrounds we've kind of taken this lighting element in there to kind of show it off a little bit and kind of give you guys a little bit more depth and make it a little bit more, uh, little bit more engaging. This right here, an example, is the, uh, the amount of gore that we can actually have in the game right now. Each character is actually um, dismemberable and up to 12 separate regions, so you're going to see a lot of variety in each one of the fatalities as they go in and out in the entire way. Uh, fatalities seem to be the biggest kind of, uh, we get the best reaction out of them. You guys want to see more fatalities so you guys can like check out the rest of it? Alright, uh, I'm going to have to ask you guys. Uh, I got in a little bit of trouble for bringing uh, the fatalities down here, so I have to ask you guys to not film this right now because we don't really have permission to have this on here. So like this, these big cameras that you guys have on right now. Un favor, a ver si pueden apagar sus cámaras. Exacto, y si quieren poderlas voltear un poquito hacia hacia otro lado para que pueda hacer su presentación. Muchas gracias. Can you raise the volume for the for this thing? 